Rugby on Off The Ball with Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us, everyone in. No, you're very welcome along. So delighted to say Joey Carberry has joined us. Good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for having me. You have your protein milk t-shirt on, you have your protein milk in front of you. Why could you possibly be here? I am here for Evermore's protein milk's release of the blueberry flavour. Oh, very good. Blueberry flavour. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Very nice. Well, we're delighted to have you in. Uh, as you can see, Joey is uh, helping launch the Avonmore Protein Milk's Blueberry Flavour. As part of Avonmore's You've Got This campaign, Joey is inspiring others through his performances on the pitch, showing that hard work and dedications, dedication are the key to success, and I suspect they are. Did you get away for a summer holiday? I did. I was in California for 17, 18 days. I started in San Diego, worked away up to San Francisco. So How was it? Very cool. Unbelievable. It was uh, the weather wasn't great. They call it uh, gloomy June over there, where it's kind of overcast a lot. But uh, yeah. it was cool. We went to about seven or eight different places along the way and rented a car and stuff. So it was pretty special. Great road trip along the west coast is a bucket list kind of thing. Exactly. It was something that we we were like we always wanted to do, and we ended up doing it. This and it worked out brilliantly. We got away for the majority of the break as well. So good. And who's we? Is that a bunch of teammates? Or no, what? sorry, uh, uh, Rob and my girlfriend. Okay. So you don't want to spend all your time with your teammates, I guess. Exactly, you see enough of them. Yeah. And how is the body? I mean, there were a bit of hamstring troubles the second half of the season and you were kind of, you always felt you were rushing back for big games and it might have been never quite right. How's all that now? Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, I played the semi-final uh, at the end of last season and got through that without any issues. So it's pretty much just kind of keeping on top of it now, making sure it doesn't reoccur. Yeah. And you guys are all back at Carton House now and in training camp. That is a long run in, isn't it? It is. It's a long running, but they kind of um, we have a bit of time off here and there. Like it's pretty much two weeks on, a week off, two weeks on, a week off. So we, we not a week off. We still have running to do, but we're getting away from the whole environment, which is nice. So you can kind of spend a bit of time away from everything. So it's pretty intense, but it's um, it's it's great to be a part of, and it's 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 good to be back with the lads and a bit of a buzz around the place. I'm sure. And is an average day like on the field, going through stuff, and then meetings, and then in the gym. Is it pretty intense, full days? It's pretty intense, especially now, because um, it's pre-season, so pretty much it's a, there's a lot of fitness and a lot of gym work going in, and um, as well as having the rugby on top of that. So uh, it's pretty long days, but um, it's enjoyable, I must say. What are you trying to do with your body? Are you trying to get bigger, leaner, smaller, stay the same? Um, You're 23 now? 23, yes. Yeah, so. Uh, I suppose getting a bit stronger would be always on the list, and maybe a little bit heavier, but I don't want to get too heavy where I lose a bit of speed or agility or something like that. So mm. finding that medium is probably the, the perfect, perfect ideal. It does seem as if leanness now is the most important thing, or it's certainly the common thing when you look at different teams around the world. Yeah, I think it's proven to that you're you're more like robust when you're when you're a bit leaner and you're less likely to have lean tissue inju uh, injuries as well. So I think it's kind of the, the right. way forward. So what would be a good body fat percentage for you at your playing weight? Uh, I think 13% is where I'm supposed to be, so that's where I'm at, which is I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, it's not bad in pre-season to be there. No, no. Um, what a mad uh, couple of years in your life. So where were you when you first heard the thought that Munster might be an option? Uh, who, who tells you? Who tells me? <coughs> it was kind of... Um, there's a, f a few meetings between myself and the RFU, and um, and is that a David Nusifora, Joe Schmidt thing, or Philip? Um, no, it would have been um, through David Nusifora and right. Joe. I met up with Joe, but it was more so just as a asking his advice more so than anything. Yeah. Um, and that's what it kind of came around pretty quickly because there was a lot of obviously speculation in the media. Um, I think from the Christmas to, and then I didn't actually hear anything from people who were irrelevant till Aprilish, and that was during the time where there was, I was playing in semi-finals and yeah. finals and uh, it was a pretty crazy probably six, seven weeks and then obviously I wanted to make my decision before getting on the plane to Australia so mm -hmm. um, yeah it was That it was is tight good. for such a big decision. How was it floated initially from say New Sephora? Is it a we really want this to happen what do you think or was it even a bit more it's up to you than it that? Was, it was uh, it was mutual. Like I, I, I was kind of pushing it as well because I wanted to get more game time. I wanted to be okay. playing at ten, where I wanted my position, where I felt I was best at. So, mm. to me, for me, the decision was made easy because I could get, I could take things into my own hands a bit more, have a bit more control over what happened, rather than waiting for someone to get injured. So, mm. um, I think. A, 
I, the second I got down there, I loved it, and I'm signed on for another three years. So, um, but I guess when it is first um, brought up, you don't know if you're going to love it. You certainly know things are going well at Leinster, yeah. and I guess in reality, Johnny Sexton is getting to an age where it's not like he has ten years ahead of him, and you'll be able to push him. So there must have been a temptation to say, well, I don't know what it's like down there. I could hang on here, play some games at 15, certainly, I know it's not your position, play some games at 10, and then over the next 18 months, two years, maybe make that jersey my own. That must have been a big temptation, and to stay in your home as well, I suppose. Yeah, I was, I suppose, and I was only 22 when it was all happening mm -hmm. as well, so I was pretty young and naive to it all, but uh, I suppose what the decision came to was having everything on the table and then seeing how much I can control from the outcome, because there was a lot of unknowns. I don't know whether they're someone got injured in Leinster, and if I stayed in Leinster, I would have played all the, se all the whole season, or if I went down to Munster, did I get injured and missed the whole season? I, like, there was a lot of unknowns, so I suppose the majority of the um, decision was made upon what I could control, and I felt that going to Munster was definitely, like, I had more of a say in my future mm. rather than waiting for someone else. And were you slightly frustrated at the amount of time you were getting a 10 at Leinster? Was there, like, like, it's interesting you say that was definitely the position I wanted as opposed to 15, even though you played that position very well. Were you a man in a hurry when you look back, saying I want to get in there and get playing? I don't think a man in a hurry. <clears throat> I just think that, obviously, with this year as well, to the World, World Cup, Cup yeah. um, and I feel my best position is a 10, and I love playing 15, and still love playing 15, but mm. I would prefer playing 10, you be a, 10. and yeah. you can be more involved. So that was, I was like, uh, this is what I want to do, so I'm going to make the decision based on that. I presume Joe Schmidt told you, well, look, the more you play a 10 at club level for me, the better I can feel about putting you in a 10 in a green jersey. It's that simple for him. Exactly. Like it's, it's, and to be honest, like that's how anyone would think, to be honest. Um, mm. It's how every team is kind of picked. So you didn't feel pressure, because on the outside it was being talked about as well. Carby's going to feel pressure here because, well, if the RFU suggested, and clearly Joe Schmidt would prefer you to get game time, it's very difficult for you to turn around, even if you did want to stay and say, I'm going to stay. You must have felt a bit of pressure, or no? It was a difficult situation regardless, because had I said, no, I'm staying, I yeah. would have felt pressure that I, I needed to play a 10 more. And then if I didn't, and, and, then, and then when I did go, then there was pressure, obviously, because I was leaving where I was comfortable and mm. leaving the place I'd lived for the last five, six years. So. There was always going to be, I wasn't going to be able to please everyone, I wasn't going to be able to, I, I knew there was going to be an element of a huge change, so mm. it was kind of, like it was, like I said, I had to make the decision where I felt that I could make the most control, controllable was about. Yeah. Who do you turn to for advice in life at this stage? Is it family? Is it someone in the game? Is it someone, a mate that we don't even know about? It's probably my dad. Most I would have talked to most about it and he was real good through it all because as tough of a time it was for me, it was really tough for my family as well. Like they were getting kind of plagued by it all. Mm. Like I thought it was tough, but <laughs> they're getting asked by random people as well. So yeah. um, it was the people closest to me, really. But in particular, my dad, who kind of he told to me as it was straight, whether I liked to hear it or I didn't like to hear it. Um, he was always like he's always been like that with me ever since. Like if I played crap, he'd tell me I played yeah. crap. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think he was a really good person to have and. He was always there that I knew he was completely in my corner, regardless of... Yeah, there's no agenda with your dad. There's least. no agenda, and like, he's more than just rugby as well, so he was looking out for me as well as the rugby side, which is great. What's the movement like? Do you go down with your girlfriend? Does she stay up here? You'd she stays up here. Yeah. Um, so even that's a big adjustment, like yeah, going down so on your own, new city. Did you know Limerick at all? Probably not. Didn't know Limerick at all, really. I, I played down there once with Clontaff. Um, other than that, not really. Um, so. But I, I, to be honest, I was, I was lucky. I knew enough of the guys from the Irish team and then played underage Irish 20s with a lot of them. So mm. um, it actually worked out perfectly, to be honest. I, I actually jumped in with Connor Oliver and Jeremy Lockman, who I'd have been friendly with since I was about 12 or 13. So, As in uh, to live with them? To live, uh, yeah, I just right. jumped in with them. So they, they, they made the move really easy, being able to just jump in with them and they showed me the places. But I probably knew half the dressing room by the, before I even went down, so that was it's another nice big comfort blanket. Yeah, because remember the first videos, the first interviews, the jokes up here were like it's a hostage video, and they're, <laughs> they're making him say he likes it and all this stuff. Yeah. But it does seem like you have settled in really well. And off the pitch, how's that process of settling into a completely new place? Yeah, like it, to be honest, it's not like I have to get on a plane to come home either. Like yeah. my parents live in Athy, which is probably an hour and twenty minutes from oh, yeah. Limerick. So, so you just hop on the M7. I could come home on a Tuesday evening if I wanted to. So those roadworks are fun. 
I'm, I'm the other side of the road works. Thankfully, I don't right. have to come through them. But um, like I, I said to them very quickly, and that's one of the biggest things I loved about going down was I felt welcome straight away. Yeah. I never felt like I was uncomfortable. I never felt, and I think that's down to the people. So it's huge to them. How do the two dressing rooms compare? Uh, similar. I'd, I'd say you have to have thicker skin down in the monster one. Right. Uh, but that's a, that's a good thing though. Um, it's if they, they didn't no slag business. you, yeah, it, they'd take no prisoners. But if they didn't slag you, then you wouldn't. You kind of know they they didn't like you. So yeah, so it's, it's a good thing. Okay, so you have to adjust to several new nicknames, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't have didn't have too much nicknames really. Um, to be honest, nothing nothing that stuck. Thankfully. Okay, you settled in well on the pitch. It seemed too. Like I mean, very early on, you're putting in good performances. And Gloucester was the first home European game, wasn't it? Yeah. And that went well, and you you were very involved then. The one I remember, I suppose, a lot of people do is almost a, a mid-season kind of marker was the Castro away game. Where yeah. You missed three or six kicks and. That really struck me as a moment where, geez, you know, if he was in any doubt about the pressure on the Munster number 10 in European action, that was a night where it was probably rammed home to you. Was your kicking good in the build with that? Was that just an off night? How, like, what kind of went on there? Were some of those kicks quite difficult in my memory? One of, them, tricks? one of them I definitely should have got. Okay. Um, and then the other two were pretty, pretty long from out wide, so. Like, I, everyone keeps saying that it was a down day. Like, it wasn't my best day, but it wasn't the worst day either. Like, mm -hmm. I got three pretty tough kicks as well, so... Um, it's funny how I remember, you just yeah. remember the ones you miss, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, that's, I'm the exact same. I always think of the worst things rather than the better things, so... Do you, do you come away from that night thinking, ah, look, it was, wasn't great, but it wasn't so bad? Or was it a moment where you said, I really need to get on top of this now? I asked that because you then didn't seem to miss one for a very long time. Yeah. Um, Your reaction to it? I, sw I didn't change anything drastically. Like I didn't. I suppose maybe I just focused more in on my technique, and I was just like, "Look, I just need to trust it." Right. Regardless of the wind and the rain, um, I suppose I was just like, "Look, I just need. To, I'm a good enough kicker. I just all I have to do is back myself." So from then on, I was kind of like, and uh, like I think I, I'm still 25 from 25 since that game, mm. and some of those kicks weren't great, but they still went over. So like, it's, I've just got to back my technique. So. Mm. Some of them were lucky as well, to be honest. So, like, uh -huh. some of them goes in your way, some of them doesn't. So, what are the hallmarks of your technique? What things do you say to yourself in your mind when you're about to kick? The important things. Um, probably just stay on line. So, when I, I go four back, four to the left, I'm on a, probably a 45 degree with the ball, and mm. um, and just not just to stay on line and not come around the back of it. Because if you come around the back your tendency to hook it left. Okay, so you want to kick through it and keep going through yeah. it straight. Yeah, so it's just stay, if I can stay straight on the ball normally, then that's when I'm going to be on line. target. Are you a Dave Alred disciple? No, no. I haven't worked with him. I've, most know. of my work's been with Richie Murphy. Okay, and did you always kick through it like that, or did you go around when you're used? Um, I still kick the, the way I've always kicked, but I've adjusted my technique to fit for that. Okay. So um, I, I, I like being able to have that natural feel to it, to be honest, rather okay. than just being preempted. Okay. Uh, do you enjoy kicking? Do you enjoy the responsibility? Yeah, I do. I've al I always have enjoyed the responsibility, and like it's, I, I enjoy kicking as well. It's not like it's a, it's a, a work for me. I like I do it as a hobby. Do you find if you're having a bad day and 25 from 25, that's a hell of a run? Is it difficult to stop that infecting the rest of your game? It used to when I was underage, you could, but like, but then some. It's almost a different part. I, obviously, it's a very important part of the game, but mm. it's a lot different to calling a play or your next tackle or your next pass. So I think being able to isolate that as one part of the game and not let it affect it is very important as well. Uh, Peter Romani said in an interview that as soon as you got down there, you were very uh, vocal in team meetings and on the pitch as well. You weren't the shy retiring type. Um, and that seemed like a really good sign because if you're gonna be a 10 of a team, you can't really kind of pussyfoot around and, yeah. and get in there. Was that a conscious decision, or did someone advise you to do that, or was it very natural, or, or talk to us about that? I suppose, naturally, I wouldn't be like that, but... Yeah, you don't strike me as the type to go in and say, everyone listen to me. After like, being in the IR setup and through, through Lens as well, I was kinda, it was something that I, kn I knew I needed to work on. Right. So, consciously, I was kind of thinking, I need to get better at this, and I need to just say what's on my mind, and that's what I felt when I went down there. I was like, look, if I want to be... A, a 10, a good 10, you have to be like that. So, um, something that I definitely had to work on, it's definitely got easier and I feel like it's, because I suppose as a 10, you're the, you have to call the plays and you want people who are listening to your calls mm. to trust that it's the right call. Mm. So, by, 
yeah, you can you have to say it in a way that they're going to be like, yes, this is what we're doing, rather than if it's kind of half-assed and it's a bit like, yeah. Uh, the World Cup is coming around the corner, which is going to be uh, fantastic, and to be going there at 23, brilliant. How you want to play desperately, obviously, and the fact that there may be World Cups in the future, you can't really bank on them. Injury can happen. This may be your only one. Who knows? Johnny Sexton's not going to have uh, more in the way. You both want to play. You're both adults. How, in your own mind? do you keep the rivalry with Sexton a healthy one as opposed to something that becomes a bit more toxic and obsessive? I suppose that like, I suppose the better I get, the more it f forces him to work harder and then the same as him like, mm. and I think that's healthy competition between any squad and, you, and you're kind of pushing each other to get better as well and it happens in all positions. Mm. Um, it's a very visible thing with 10s for yeah, whatever reason. Yeah, and 10s for some reason get the limelight a bit yeah. more but uh, I suppose like all I'm trying to concentrate on is getting my game to the point where if I'm needed to be called upon, mm. that I'll be ready and I'll be able to do the job. So. And do you have to kind of avoid getting into almost comparisons with him? How did he go today at training? How did that happen? Because invariably, some part of your brain is going to be taken over and aware of that, but it can't be. Yes, the main thing. sometimes, but we're different players at the end of the day as well. Like it's, it's like you can't compare the best players in the world because they're different, better at. They're, they're different at better aspects. So, mm. like, I suppose if I can add as much elements to my game that he's good at, mm. then I might, I'm going to be the better player from it. So, um, look, I, I think it's just something that, for me, it's just driving myself on to be better in myself. And mm. competition will make the whole squad better, the whole Irish team better, because everyone's performance will have to go up. Uh, how do you find coming on as a substitute into games at 10? Um, it's it's a bit tricky because sometimes you can be called upon the first minute or it could be the last minute or you might not even get on but then you have to prepare the week and for, uh, the week before coming up to it as if you're starting because mm. who knows what happens in the warm up or the last training session so it is a bit tricky and emotionally as well you get up so so up for the games and mm. then you only get like a minute at the end it's a bit disappointing but to be honest like it's it, it's it's great to be part of the teams and it's great to like be involved in the games that we've mm. been involved in. So, are you getting better at it? Like you, you know, I always think of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at Man United. He was a brilliant substitute, and Alex Ferguson used to say about him that he would watch the game so intently, and he would be in the game mm. when others might be just kind of kicking their heels a bit and stuff. I, it's actually a skill to be a good substitute. Even come on with 15 minutes to go, most players start a game and realize I'm not going to get my second win until 15 minutes in. All these things are against you sometimes. It's a, yeah, it's, it's pretty tough sometimes, um, but you have to be you have to be aware of like the different factors that's happening in the game at the time, the the score and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different things, and especially as a 10, like if you're coming on as a sub and you've only a limited amount of plays to call, mm. some of the plays might be called. So you have to be tuned in to yes. what might work and yeah, might yeah. not work and what's been used. So. Joe Schmidt seems very good at giving feedback, just direct feedback, you need to get better at this, this and this. What has he told you you need to get better at? Um, a few things really. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure. But like it's, it's, it's genuine, it's probably, it's hard to say, but it's like, it's having the all round game and I suppose picking the right option when the right option is to do. Mm -hmm. So whether it's uh, to pass or to kick or to run, knowing what time is right and mm playing the space as well really like so if the space isn't behind you should try and get it in behind or mm. and being able to ma manipulate the defense as well and how is your decision making like is it it strikes me it's, it must by its nature be very instinctive a lot of the time yeah because you don't have too much time to think I, about I wouldn't it. have thought so um, um, so now it, it, I feel like it'd be good and I, I go off instinct more so than anything okay. so um, it's normally afterwards when it's actually happened, you realise what's actually happened. Okay. And is it sometimes surprising when you watch it back and you realise, oh, that was the wrong decision, I, I just didn't see that space, or I just didn't see that option? Does that te is that what tends to happen in those Some, moments? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. I, that's why I think training in Irish camp is so good because it's at match intensity. Yeah. So you, when you watch training back, you, you can realise and you can see what, it, what you could have done better and try and next time bring it into your game. Have you been um, looking on YouTube with Stephen Larkin back in his day? Doing I watched a few pops? videos, yeah, but I, I would have been a big fan anyway, growing yeah. up and watching him play the whole time. He's pretty, pretty, pretty impressive player. Yeah, I guess, you, I mean, that, that for you, I mean, the kind of player you are, you could just see a nice connection there, hopefully, and you could, he's definitely someone you can learn off in a big way. That's an interesting time for him to arrive into your life. Yeah, 100%. Uh, very excited to <coughs> be working with him over the next few years, um, especially because like, he started off as a 15 as well. Mm. 
and then kind of got p pushed in and started playing and it just showed like his even his influences he's had on the Brumbies and the Australian team rubs off on how he played so it's 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 very exciting because the monster attack is one of the things that's been criticized like Chris Farrell came out I think it was after the Saracens game and just said look yeah we, it needs to get better we need to get better at this Obviously, Felix Jones is gone now and Jerry Flannery's gone. That must have been a big shock for you guys. Was that in the offing? Did you know that was coming? We didn't really know it was coming. We knew that there was a few negotiations and a few chats going on, um, but we didn't know they were going to leave. We didn't think they were going to leave. Okay. Um, so that was a bit of a shock, and it's pretty sad as well because like, they're obviously two great monster men and have put in so much to the club. Yeah. Um, so it was sad to see them go because they're... The, as, as good as they are coaching, they're even better off the pitch. Like, they're such nice guys. Yeah. Who was taking a lead in your kind of attacking training and life? Was it Van Gran? Was it Jones? It, it would have been Jones. Right. He was the attacking coach. Okay, so he was hands on and doing stuff and passing on ideas. By all accounts, he's excellent as well. Mm. That's what I mean. Like, and like he did such a good job considering how early he had to retire because of his injury and how, like, how much of the deep end he got chucked into coming in and going straight into a coach because it's not easy being a coach at all and there's so much it's so different to being a player so huge respect for that yeah I'm sure you'll do well in the future a kind of whirlwind couple of years in your life are you pinching yourself a little bit on the precipice of a World Cup when three years ago you know you were Joey Nobody to the yeah. wider public uh, have you got your head around this new reality that is the next 10 15 years hopefully um, a little bit but it still doesn't really hit home right. properly um, I suppose I'm kind of living in it's because like, you're in a bit of a bubble when you're a rugby player. You're yeah. kind of you're so busy that you don't have time to really sit back and see how things unfold. So, but to be honest, I'm I'm loving things, how things yeah. are going, and I can't complain at all. I won't change anything. Even for your family, it must be an amazing ride for all of you guys to be on. I guess Christmas time are those times when you come together and, re and reflect on it all. You must kind of say to your dad, "This is a bit mad." Yeah, it is. And <laughs> it's it's great to have them coming along with me because it's all new to them as well. Sure. So yeah. Will they go to Japan? Yeah, yeah, they're planning. They're they're not too sure when um, or what game to go out for yet, but um, I'm sure they'll be keeping a close eye on it anyway. Okay, so um, well, what a busy kind of months and years, I guess, ahead for you as well. So World Cup, and then you've signed a contract extension at Munster. It's not coming back. No, <laughs> no think, I'm happy where I am. Think you're good. So, uh, no, I, I the second I got down there, I loved it, and I knew that there was, it, I just had a special feeling about it. So when the opportunity came up, I was just like. This is what I want to do. Okay, well listen, very best of the World Cup. Hope it goes well. Have a good one. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, appreciate that's, it. No, appreciate you coming in. That's Joey Carberry, who's uh, helping to launch Avonmore Protein Milk's blueberry uh, flavour today, and it's all part of Avonmore's You've Got This campaign. Joey, thanks again. That's us done. Rugby on Off The Ball. With Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us. Everyone in.